Hey guys, Hyptosis here. I had actually made a really long detailed tutorial on uh, how to make stackable enemies, you know, enemies that uh, have multiple parts that you can target and destroy their arms, destroy their legs, etc. But uh, my headset was messed up and it didn't record my voice, so I don't have that anymore. So when I make another uh, one of those units, I'll remake the tutorial for that. Also, I'm working on a tutorial for uh, how to do parallaxing maps, but uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not real sure how to do it, so I'm having to learn how to do it first. How to do it well, anyway. I can, I can do one that works, but I want it to, you know, I want to do a really good one. So, I'm waiting on that. Something I thought I'd do real quick, this is going to be real short, is um, I wanted to show how to diversify your tile sets in a really simple way. So, I like to make one or two pieces of art specifically for every zone the player's in. So here you can see on my screen I have these caves, right? This is the first caves, no, not that. These are the first caves the player encounters in the game. Then I have some second caves here and it's made with the exact same tile set. There's nothing unique about it. So what I'm going to do is uh, in the story I talk about how this cave used to be a mine. So I'm going to make two or three maybe four little pieces uh, just tiles of pieces of equipment and stuff left over and I'm just going to scatter them throughout it and it'll make the this area feel different from the previous area even though most of the art is the same. I think in every area, every zone, you know, every cavern system, every town, you want to put a few things that are unique so that the player has something new to see. You know, it's not the same recycled art over and over and over without you having to do tons of art just for it. Okay, so here I've got my uh, I've got my sheet open. You see, there's not much on this. I've got lots of room. I'm just going to I, I usually just draw them right in here with a hard edge brush. I love working at 32 pixels instead of the 16 on the tiles. You don't have to worry about and with you know modern computers, you don't have to worry about doing pixel art basically. Like it's okay for the edges to be blurry and stuff. It makes it so much more fun for me and of course faster. So let's see, we want to do um, a couple of pickaxes, I think. So I'm just going to draw them big like this. I'm making this one on the right is going to be sitting up against the wall. The one on the left is going to be on the ground. I'm using a hard edge brush. You can see I'm not putting a lot of detail into them. They're going to be very small. Just adding a little shadow here. Whoops. I'm going to set those shadows to 50%. And let's go ahead and shrink these down. Shrink, we'll go ahead and shrink them down here. I don't know what all that beeping is about. Try to get them small enough that they'll each fit inside one of these tiles by themselves. And I put them off center quite a bit. I don't like items, like you can see these little bits of debris in the upper left. I don't like them to be centered. Uh, I think it makes, you know, it makes the grid more visible. So I try to 
going to sharpen these just a hair. All right, and then I'm going to draw a few little pieces of debris just laying around. What is beeping? Why is it beeping? It's doing it when I resize my brush, and I don't know why. All right, sorry about that. Just little pieces of wood or something. Fifty percent on the shadow. I think my fraps has got something to do with that. Sharpen them just a hair. File, save. I'm going to go right in here. I may add some, um, let's see, cave. Make sure that they're walkable. This one would probably, the one leaning up against the wall would probably do not want them to be able to walk over. I usually just try to feel out a spot for them to sit where I think they would look alright. I may have to move that one around a little bit. Let's see if I put it... I'm very seat of, seat of my pants on this stuff. It needs to go into a corner. Okay, I'm going to do it like that. I think that looks good. And I'm going to leave it... I'm going to leave it walkable. I think it'll look alright if the player is able to walk over the bottom of that. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. And definitely do not overuse these things. I think that's the worst. Make sure in most cases that the player cannot see all of these at once. You know, like at once on the screen. Spread them out so they can't see them all at once. A few pieces you can get away with, but usually something like these are pretty bright. They stand out quite a bit. They're also the thing that makes the map unique. So I would keep them, keep them uh, off the screen at the same time. All right, I think that already, already, just those few little things is making it look different than the uh, than the original caves. These empty kind of simple caves, and then these have little bits and pieces. Let's do a little track real quick. I think a, a little minecart track would look cool. So I'm just gonna draw the rails first and make them broken because th this is a really old cave, so I don't have to worry about making a complete track set, although I probably will do that later. Tracks are fun to, to put down. I'm doing the track up and down here. And let's do the boards. I'm going to make these boards uneven because it has not been cared for one bit. Not at all. I'm gonna add some dinginess here. I'm just using solid black. 
and I'm just painting in little spots where I want there to be stains, shadows, stuff like that, and I'm doing it on its own layer over the top. Just trying to age this wood a little bit. It looks ugly right now, but we're going to lower the opacity of this, and it shouldn't look so bad, especially once you resize it. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw, a, throw the shadow on right here too, just over the top. We're going to lower the opacity. I think it'll work. All right, set that to 50, and combine those layers. Ignore the beeping. Combine those layers. Get our uh, get our grid back on. You use Control H for that, and you can adjust the size of the grid under Edit, Preferences, and Grid and Slices. Very helpful. Just pop that in here. Duplicate layer. Sharpen. Set that to 30%. Combine the layers. File. Save. Throw them in there. They, they should look good near the uh, near the pieces of wood. Like these little pieces of wood were knocked off of it. I'm going to have to do some sideways ones too, though, to go with it. There's no way around it. They look a little bright, I think. Let's, uh, let's darken these pieces a little bit. We're going to select all the stuff we just made, go to Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast, Turn down the brightness just a little bit, but remember to turn the contrast down too so you don't get really obnoxious colors. File, save. See how that looks? Yeah, that looks better, I think. Alright, let's go ahead and I'm going to sample the colors off of that now that we've got it and make, a, uh, make one more piece that's kind of angled. Now, if I was trying to make a piece that was still in use, you know, these pieces still in use, I wouldn't be nearly as reckless as I'm being with them right now. These are supposed to be old, beat up, no longer cared for. In fact, I'm going to put this, I'm going to make another layer and put this board actually knocked out of, out of alignment there. That piece has been knocked out and just, nobody's been maintaining it, so... These are abandoned mines. All right, let's throw some highlights on this metal. Throw some highlights on this wood. Whoops, wrong layer. All right, solid black. Gonna put in those stains, the shadows, all that fun stuff. And if you guys like my tiles, a lot of my tiles are available for free online. Just search for Hyptosis. Tile sets, hypnosis free tile sets. And uh, right, I'm going to set that shadow to 50%. And feel free to use those sets that I've made uh, available online. Using Control T to resize this, I'm going to line it up with this one here. They're not actually going to be connected, but I just want it to, uh, I just want them to look right, like the right size. Select, deselect. Duplicate layer, sharpen, turn the opacity to about 30 on that one. Then we're going to decrease the brightness just a hair, decrease the contrast, try to eyeball those colors to be the same there. Alright, and then 
compose this so that it's sort of in alignment like so. All right. I'll save. Let's throw this in here. Find a spot for it. Here we go. This looks like a good spot. Yeah. Then put this above it. Put the pieces around it. All right. Save. Now this cave already looks considerably different than the previous one. Maybe a bucket would be good. I can just an old knocked over bucket or something. Let's see here. Let's draw it real quick. I'm going to put the highlight on the rim that's closest to us. Then going to make the interior the darkest spot right here. That highlighted area there will will read as closer. By instinct, I know you probably want will want to outline that area, but don't do it. Or if you do outline it, be sure to go back and uh, change it to a, a highlighted color. All right, and we're going to throw a shadow under it. Use solid black. Like that. Just a little bit to make it touch in the ground. Doesn't have to doesn't have to be perfect. Set that to 50%. Combine them. Combine them, get the beep. I'm not sure what that's about. Then shrink it down. I'm going to make it real small. Throw it right up here in this empty spot we got. Sharpen it just a hair. And I'm going to set it in the upper left corner so maybe I can tuck it into a corner somewhere and the player won't feel like they should be bumping into it. Because I don't think it's big enough for uh, us to make it an obstacle. There we go. Stuck it there. Stick one there. Oh, already put one on this map. And stick one there. Alright. Save. Let's uh, let's scope and scope these out. See how they look. So the first one, all right? First set is here. Yeah, not too bad, right? You can tell what those are, and didn't take any time at all to make them. Doesn't feel weird that I can walk on them. I always go and test this stuff out. Ignore me walking through the wall there. I was trying to avoid a fight. Feel weird that I can walk on that? No, that looks good. I just do them and test them, and then if it, something feels off, just go and fix it. So now we're going to look at the old cave, and let's see if it feels different. Yeah, see, this feels more like a cave, maybe less like a mine. Oops, got in a fight. Yeah, more like a cave, less like... This was a this cave's like a pass, so there's lanterns and stuff in it, but, you know, there's not mining equipment. Yeah, I feel good about this. Alright, thanks for checking it out, guys. Hope it helped.